Hello and welcome back. Today's video is going to be a review of the Gibson Les Paul Classic Modern. This is Everything Guitar. The Les Paul Classic is basically a hot-wired version of a Les Paul. They first appeared in 1989, and this particular configuration first appeared in 2019. The model you're looking at now is from November 2022. You have four colour options, Heritage Cherry, Honey Burst, Ebony Black, and this model, which is Translucent Cherry, a colour somewhat akin to Lucy, which was George Harrison's guitar famously given to him by Eric Clapton. So in that particular deal, George Harrison got a Les Paul and Eric Clapton got George Harrison's wife. Is that a fair swap? So we better talk about the body. Not George Harrison's wife's body, but the Les Paul Classics body. It's one of those nine hole weight relief bodies, but the weight relief is slightly different compared to the Les Paul Studio and the Les Paul Modern, even though it's part of the Modern series. It's a mahogany body and it's a bound solid maple top and the body is finished in nitro cellulose lacquer. <laughs> Onto the neck, it's a solid mahogany neck with a 60s style slim taper, a bound rosewood fingerboard and 22 medium jumbo frets, acrylic trapezoid inlays and there's a Gibson logo inlay in pearl on the headstock. <laughs> Time to get the tape measure out. I'll do this in inches. Scale length is 24 and 3 quarter inches. Nut width 1.69 inches. Width at the 12th fret 2.07 inches. This one's difficult to say. The neck depth at the nut is 0 0.81 inches and the neck depth at fret number 12 is 0 0.89 inches. The overall weight can range anywhere from 9.7 pounds to just over 10 pounds. If you can convert all that to kilograms using an abacus and your fingers, then you may win a prize. The prize, by the way, isn't George Harrison's wife. guitar comes with a plush five latch tan case with the Gibson logo on it. It's really lovely cushioned interior but doesn't include the old blanket. They used to have some sort of silk blanket they used to put in them but you don't get that anymore. And the regular case candy that comes with it, the warranty card, owner's manual, the Gibson multi-tool which you can use to adjust the truss rod and its various allen key wrenches and screwdrivers and things that you would need at a gig to get you out of trouble. A cleaning cloth and usually there's a Gibson strap that comes with it. And at the moment I've got the tone on six. Just 
in flat-out humbucker mode. Onto the hardware. As usual, the guitar comes with burst bucker, humbucking type pickups. The coils are uncovered and exposed. I'm assuming they're Aronico 5. That seems to be the consensus. The front pickup is a 61R and the rear pickup is a 61T. So they're zebra coils or what we call in England zebra coils. The output readings of the pickups, the front is 7.94 kilo ohms and the rear is 7.9 kilo ohms. There's the very beautiful Grover tuning keys, but they're not locking. Not really a moot point for me, I don't mind. And they are the Rotomatic tuners. It comes with a GraphTech nut, which is nice. It usually comes with a wide strap button. Mine was replaced with shallow strap locks. Again, I use them a lot, so I didn't mind that. There are four 500 kilo ohm pots, two volume, two tone. They all have push-pull functions. When it's down, it's in standard Les Paul mode, but when you pull them up, you've got coil tap front, coil tap rear, outer phase, full humbucker, and you've got the bypass of the tone circuit in basically a just a hot bridge humbucker in flat out mode, which incidentally reads eight kilo ohms. You will find a PCB circuit in the main control compartment with 500k quick connect pots. Gone are the days of point to point wiring, soldering, this helps the factory speed up production time and most people probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a PCB and hardwired. You wouldn't want me to do a blindfold test on you, would you? Front rhythm pickup. And then when you pull this one out, it just goes flat out. So it's just everything on 10, no tone control in the circuit. So if I was to say beyond the front pickup, this switch overrides everything. So front pickup. It's at this point that I'm going to stick my neck out and say who I think this guitar is aimed at. And this is because I've seen mixed reviews from people saying they use it in standard Les Paul humbucker mode and they don't have any need for the other switching options, which I'll talk about later. But I think I know who this instrument really is aimed at. For the musician who demands a versatile instrument, perhaps someone playing a variety of songs and maybe they're on stage and they don't want to keep swapping guitars. And so this Les Paul Classic can get you into the ballpark for several different sounds, like the Peter Green out of phase sound, some single coil type coil tap sounds, which would sound more like a Stratocaster or a P90. And then there's a flat out bridge humbucker sound that bypasses the tone circuit completely to give you, well, the hottest sound possible out of that pickup. 
which would probably be a sound favoured by heavier rock players. Just some moment when you really need to make the guitar sing and you don't want anything in the way of the circuit. Balls out, as they say. <laughs> so what we're saying is, it's a guitar that can do blues, it can do funk and country, it can do all-out rock, and you've still got your standard humbuckers there in usual mode for all those classic sounds. It really is a versatile guitar if you need an instrument that has to be versatile. And when you're in between positions, obviously you've got the option of turning the tone control on one down. I'm going to turn it one of the tone controls down to five, and then I'm going to do the opposite. So at the moment I'm going to put the front pickup on five on the tone and leave the other pickup where it is. Both the other both pickups on ten on the volume. So now the front pickup's on five. I'll do it the other way around. Now the bridge pickup is on five on the tone. It's probably more effective to put on something like three. This one on three. Well, let's see what the tone controls do. So now the tone control is completely off. On two, it's on three, four, five, six, seven. difference will come in when you then start messing around with phase. Now I've heard some reviewers say that this is an unusable sound. Well it may be unusable like this, but if you move one of the pickups say from 10 to 8, let's see what happens. there from the outer phase but it's starting to become a bit more masked. I'll try it on seven. Compare that to when we're in phase. So there 
there is a difference. I tend to think that it affects the harmonics. So it's out of phase, now back into phase. pick up. So this is still backing off the front pick up. You can hear all the bass returns so the volume's on 10. You hear the bass the return of it. As opposed to in phase. pick up on its own. So you blend in enough just to get that slight honk. You can compare it. Just try the single coil sounds. To get the single coil, you lift this switch. This is for the bridge pickup, single coil. So they're both now on single coil. So now we can just compare the single coil to the humbucker. in between now, some people may want a kind of in between sounding honk like you'd get on say a Telecaster or a Stratocaster that's why some people say they're a little bit disappointed with this but if you play around with the volumes of each so they're not both the same so if I start backing off the rear volume. And then compare that to the, say, the front single coil. Rear single coil. pickups on about nine now and this is on ten so both single chords let's try it the other way around put this one on ten put this one on nine back both on ten Progressively more and more dominated by the rear pickup. And now it's starting to go back. So, no, no outright honk there. That's when we put them out of phase. Do the same with the 
other way around now, so we're out of phase. Bridge pick up. Just thought to back that off a little bit. can play around and find some other sounds. Now, if you're at a gig and you need that out of phase sound, then that's one thing you can use. Now, I'm not much of one for aesthetics, but I do like the look of this guitar. I think it sounds good. It plays really nice. I'm a fan of the 60s necks as opposed to the 50s necks. I've tested this instrument extensively, both live and recording and I'm very happy with it. In particular, I love the versatility. I love the fact that you can use this. Now, if I break a string on the Telecaster, at least you can cover single call sounds on the Les Paul Classic. The same goes if you break a string on a Stratocaster. The Les Paul Classic can at least cover those songs. It may not be an exact match, but it will do the job adequately enough. But you can get through a gig, and I think that's what makes it a practical instrument. I wouldn't want another kind of output on the pickups. I think they're roughly right for what I would use. I like path style pickups and these are near enough to that. So I think all round is a great instrument. So that was the Gibson Les Paul Classic. Let me know in the comments what you think about this guitar. Do you like the switching options? Do you like the pickups in it? Do you like the look of the guitar? Would you use one at a gig? Do you agree with me that it's versatile? Or do you prefer the top of the range Les Pauls? Or would you rather buy a cheaper version of the instrument such as the Epiphone? And thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. So if this video has helped you then why not subscribe? And why not check out some of our other videos? And there are two here to check out for you now. And remember, don't just watch, play, and make the commitment to becoming a better guitarist by subscribing to the channel. All the best. Hasta luego.